For me, this is such an exciting challenge because we've never actually made a pasta that is hand-shaped with this degree of difficulty. Oh, come on. There's only two ingredients, flour and water. I think this is very much a technique-driven challenge. To me, the most important part of the dough, I think, is having that hydration level at that proper point where it's going to give you the drag on the board, it's not going to stick anywhere, and you're going to be able to achieve great texture and a great look to the pasta. Hey. So 25 minutes is a little uh, worrisome, but I'm just going to put every ounce of effort I got into pulling this off. We got to do what we got to do. My strategy to beat Barry here is work fast and really start pushing my flavor with my basil and tomato sauce. I see Andy as one of the front runners, but it doesn't scare me to cook against him. The first 20 shifts I ever worked in a restaurant, my job was to hand roll the pasta. So I know what I'm doing. Barry, unfortunately, I'm going to beat you today. <laughs> Old age and treachery, man. <laughs> Always watch out for it. You know, the Loragitas in the butter and herb sauce, they are a much more delicate noodle than the Compunti. They require that delicate little twist to it, and consistency in size is super important. Oh, man, May is fast. That's how you can tell she's a dough master. I'm going to beat Andre because, you know what, I work with dough for a living. I know the feel of dough, so I think that's why I have the fancy chair. I own a dumpling business. I work with dough all the time, so there's just so much pressure to win. I am laser-focused, and I'm just going to do it. These are rustic pastas, so they have a bit of a rustic feel, but there's still a consistency that you want to see between each of those noodles. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Oscar, which of the three do you think is the hardest to shape? For me, I would say troffier is quite challenging, simply because it takes a very delicate touch with your bench scraper. If you press too hard, it's going to go right through it, and you can come up with some very odd-looking troffier. I've decided I'm going all Nona style on the troffier. I'm going to work with my hands, because I know Andrew's going to use the bench scraper, so I want to try and get just a little bit above him. Best tools you got. They do all the things. <laughs> Andrew only knows one gear, and it's sixth gear, so he's flying. Speed is the challenge. Every task I can get done quickly is just one step faster. If you're being chased by a bear, you only have to outrun the person you're running with. Ten minutes! You only have ten more minutes left. This is not easy. 25 no. minutes is its quick. So as we all know, when you make fresh pasta, the most important thing is having the appropriate sauce. There should just be enough sauce in it to coat the noodles, no more, no less. Oh, Jen's got the mortar and pestle. Yes. For my pesto sauce, I want to break my basil in a mortar and pestle because I know sticking it in a blender bruises it really bad, so then it oxidizes. It's going to take so much longer. It's taking longer. her so much longer. It's not efficient. Whew. Andy's making a lot of mistakes right now with his sauce. You see what he's doing? He's got way too much garlic. He's grating the cheese into the sauce while it's boiling. You should never do that with yeah, pasta. No. Cheese always goes on last. I want to see the pasta in the pot soon, or you're going to be in hot water. It's not boiling. Oh, my god. Jen, get your pasta in get there. Get your pasta in the water, Jen. Two minutes. Only two more minutes left. Come on. Let's, let's go, go, guys. Let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Oh, Only a few more seconds. Nice. Finish it off. Finish it off. Oh, this is stressful. Boom. 15 seconds! Get ready for the countdown! Keep going, Jen. Keep going, Jen. I think they're cooked. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! Yes! Well done, guys. That was nuts. Before we start tasting, we just want to thank Oscar for today. Oscar, I think your dad may have met his future replacement here with you. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Andrew and Jane, time to see if you can impress a demon chef with your trophia and a pesto sauce. I'm feeling very disappointed. Andrew's plate looks beautiful, and I don't even have a full serving of pasta done. And it's just a mess. Okay, 
Are you happy with this, Andrew? I'm quite happy, yes. Jen? I thought my, uh, sorry. Time just got away from me. I went with a more classic version of hand rolling it. I just know I wanted to do better. Don't despair, all right? Let's go look at the shape. Andrew, it's all over the place. It's supposed to resemble a spiral, okay? But it's not consistent. Now, to finish this, again, I see a distinct difference. The color variation, you notice right away, okay? This has kind of like a brownish tint to it. And this is like it's fresh green. You know, I love that bite on that pasta. And it's well cooked. You got the texture, which I enjoy. Sauce-wise, you added probably a bit too much of the pine nut and the cheese. Okay. Because it makes the sauce very, very heavy. Okay. okay? Yes. But good effort. Thank you, chef. Jan, the pasta, it's a little bit more consistent, but it may be a problem with size. Now, to finish this, the pasta, it's a little bit hard. Okay. It's not bouncy. Using your hand instead of a scraper when you're rolling it, you probably overrolled it a bit. But the sauce is beautiful. I get the freshness. You got the acidity in there as well. I would say it's a fine effort. Thank you. Overall, I would say the winner is... Andrew. Andrew, head to the gallery. Thank you, chef. Andre and May, please bring your dishes up. Andre and May. You both made loriguitas with an herb butter sauce. The noodles here, Andre, are very close to what Oscar showed you. <sighs> How long did you cook your pasta? Maybe a minute and 20 seconds. The water wasn't boiling. I had to put something on the plate. I can tell the center of that noodle is raw. Always add your pasta to water that's rumbling. You did shine, though, with your flavors here. The flavors are big, bold, and confident. Delicious. The noodles here may look beautiful. They're very generous, they're very plump. And your sauce looks like you really emulsified it. It's a lot more generous. This pasta is cooked perfectly. However, your flavors are a little bit muted. They're not as electric as what we've come to expect from you. Flavor-wise, I would pick you, Andre. Technique, May, I would go with you. The winner of the second showdown is... May. May, head up to the gallery. Thank you, Chef. Okay, Barry and Andy, please bring up your capunti with tomato sauce. Barry, I have to ask you, how do you feel about Andy picking you as the one to go head to head with in this duel? Obviously, he felt I'm going to be the easiest one to beat, and I hope he pays for that. So let's start off by looking at Barry's uncooked capunti. I am quite impressed with the way they look. Nicely done. Thank you, chef. Your cooked pasta. What I do like is that vibrant, fresh tomato sauce. It is inviting. Sauce has a nice freshness to it. And the taste and the texture is really on point. Well done. Thank you, chef. Andy. Your uncooked capunti. Size variance within reasonable boundaries. Your cooked pasta. Your sauce is a little darker and deeper in color. Why do you think that is? I went heavy with the basil. The cook on the pasta, spot on. Yes. And you were happy with the flavors of the sauce? I was happy with it. Interesting. Can you listen to me? Yeah. Come to a pasta salad. I've got an amazing plan and I just need to convince Jennifer to go with it. I can make pasta and I'm yeah. fast with pasta. Yeah? Yes. Is that what you want to do? Yes. Let's do that. Okay, gonna, I trust you. Slam. I am so excited to work with Terry because he's an absolute genius. I am trusting my partner here and I'm ready to work my way to the winner's circle. Oh, the irony. I'm <laughs> Italian and you're making the pasta. I know, right? <laughs> 
So we're going to boil the pasta in broth. Yeah. Just to inject some flavor in yeah. it. Terry, what are you making here? We're making a bow tie pasta, and we've got some very beautiful herbs and vegetables to support it. Who's deciding what happens here? Terry's actually leading by storm, and I'm totally okay with that. Let me ask you a question now. Sure. Who's going to be to blame if this dish is a bit of a disaster? If this dish is a disaster, it's both of our faults. I look forward to seeing it. This is prawn farfalle pasta salad with pistachios, peas, and kale. The colors just jump out. It's fantastic. I noticed you had soy sauce in your station. Yes, chef. We used that to marinate the shrimp. You don't typically see soy sauce and Italian food together. Let's see how it tastes. I've never had a dish that tastes this way. This is a very new taste for me. That is delicious. It's an original. <laughs> the soy gives you that great salt component. And then you have these little hits of the pistachio, the kale. You're a very clever man. Thank you, Chef. Jennifer, you were very smart, too, to follow Terry's lead. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> Trevor chose the man. Uh, he's a boy's boy. He likes his men. <laughs> Enjoy the rest because uh, I'll take over. <laughs> Sweet is my forte. I am making peach gazpacho, sweet cheese ravioli, and some bacon marmalade. I love to play those sweet, salty flavors. This is a workout, man. I'm trying to get all the bear bubble out. She's making a dessert ravioli. Yeah. Oh my god, that's mm. intense. Justine is so good. I love her. Please bring up your dish. I'm proud of the dish I put out, but you never know what the judges are going to say. I did a peach gazpacho, and I did a dessert cheese ravioli. Look at that. That's fully loaded. This really works. <laughs> this is incredible. You have achieved so many different flavors and textures in one dish. Wonderful balance of sweet and savory. It's an original. I've never had anything like it. You should be very proud of this. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Justine. Hi, Chef Michael. Delicious. <laughs> Light, true to the taste of beautiful ripe peaches. You can almost taste the sunshine in those. <laughs> it's astonishing what you've done in 60 minutes. Thank you. I feel good. I'm really, really proud of myself. This is going to be the dish of the competition. Sabrina, how are you? I'm good. You, chef? What are you making? Tagatelle pasta and braised lamb shank in a pressure cooker. How often have you used a pressure cooker at home? I don't use a pressure cooker, but I'm very familiar with how it works. And that doesn't rattle you? Nope. Why would you be using the smallest burner for a pressure cooker? Is it on its smallest burner? Good luck. Thank you. My pressure cooker singing. Sabrina is a lamb in the pressure cooker. She's making fresh noodles. My pasta is giving me the hardest time right now. If this doesn't work out and I go home on pasta, I'll be shamed by the Italian community of Montreal. Look at Sabrina, she's still with the pasta. We are either about to taste the freshest pasta we've ever had. Or no pasta. Or no, or no pasta. pasta. Come on now. One minute, you have one minute left. You better start playing now. David has got everything on his plate except the ice cream. Well, he's leaving it down to the wire. Ten. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! This is a braised lamb shank and king oyster mushroom tagatelli. I've been waiting to be able to braise a proper piece of meat. And would that have been your tool of choice to do it in, a pressure cooker? It's the only tool I can use to do it in 60 minutes, chef. That's right. The lamb is unmistakable. Rich, bold flavor. The wonderful herbs, the red wine. If I could change one thing, 
I would want a little bit more of that brothy sauce, just to really make it sing. But it's a great dish. You should be very proud. Hey, chef. You barely had this noodle on the plate. Wife's that? I wanted my dough to rest properly. You rest it any longer, it would be resting in peace. <laughs> To me, texture, but that noodle is perfect. Good techniques here. You did a nice job. Don't care what it looks like, it's gonna be chopped up. This is messy. Add these into chunks. I'm doing the fourth course and I'm making a ravioli dopey, which is a double stuffed pasta. I need to get my skirt steak braising in a pressure cooker right away because I need to cook that down. Skirt steak takes time to cook. Why would you, with only an hour, create another obstacle for yourself. I'm already off the start feeling super overwhelmed with how much stuff I need to do. I'm like really worried about time. Come on. Thank you. Oh, that sucker needs to go as high as freaking possible. The yolk pasta is so stiff. Holy hell, I'm making a mess. Oh, that's you smoking. I was worried it was my pressure cooker. <laughs> I was panicked. I'm working on the second course. I'm going to be making a stuffed seafood dumpling. This is my first savory dumpling dish here. So this is how I make my money. Tay has already had a chance to make a stuffed pasta in the vegan challenge, but I haven't had a chance to showcase a savory stuffed dumpling pasta yet. And I really want this opportunity to do so. Don't lose focus, Tay. You got this. You got this. It's a total mess. So Taya has abandoned the pressure cooker, but Skirt Steak's best friend is a pressure cooker when you only have 60 minutes. Oh, it's nice and tender. Oh, I'm just going to chop it up then. You know, Taya's off to a bit of a bad start, but we've seen her pull things together many times before. So hopefully she'll be able to get things back on track. <sighs> 30 minutes! You have 30 minutes left. Yeah, that's going. The pressure is insane. <sighs> I'm just kind of being really rough with these spot prawns. I don't care that they're ripped because they're gonna be chopped up into my filling anyways. And I wanna take the shells and roast them off to develop more flavor before I throw them into my stock. One more spot prawn. Hi there, mate. Hi, Chef Michael. What are you working on? I'm gonna be doing a stuffed seafood dumpling. Now I'm currently making a seafood stock. That's gonna be the base for my broth. Interesting. So it sounds like you and Taya are doing stuffed pastas. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> was there any concerns between you and Taya or the rest of the cooks about having two pasta dishes? There was concern at first, but mine's seafood and hers is meat-based, so I feel like there's difference enough in that. Sounds like there are some differences, but it could be a case of the two dueling pasta makers right here. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> I look forward to seeing how it all turns out on a plate. Thank you very much, Chef. <laughs> Thank you. Not that great on time right now. I really want to change people's perception of what a dumpling can be. You can make these really elegant and really beautiful. Okay. It's a little thick. But still feels a little thick. Taya right now is cutting it really close. She may be cooking herself out of this competition. Stay calm. Stay calm. She just needs to bear in mind she has the fourth course. Maybe just three annulotti or even two per person with some other kind of garnish would be sufficient. Okay. Oh my god. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. This is the dumbest thing I have ever done. I'm trying to stay strong. I'm not feeling very good. I'm trying to take breaths, but I'm breathing really heavily, and I'm realizing that I'm pushing myself really far, and I am just trying to plow through it because I don't want to not have anything on the plate. When I said I wanted to be pushed, I didn't think I would be pushed this far. Thank you. Looks amazing, really. May, please describe your dish. Um, so I made a lobster and spot prawn capoletti. I also made a seafood stock out of the lobster shells and the shrimp shells. And then I made a chili oil with prawn heads, and then I just finished it off with a touch of miso and a touch of yuzu in there for some flavor complexities. It smells really good. <laughs> Thanks, Tia. Andrew, does it taste as good as it looks? I think it's wonderful. It does look great. I like the broth. I like the play on Italian, but using some of these Asian components. I would say maybe just use either shrimp or lobster, not both. I do agree with Andrew. I think either spot prawns or lobster, maybe just lobster in this case would be better, especially with the spot prawns cooked texture can become a little bit mushy sometimes because of its delicate nature. 
Beautiful presentation as always, May. I like all the flavors. The yuzu is really surprising. The broth is delicious. Texturally, I would have liked a little bit more like chunks of lobster in there. I like that bite. I actually agree for the most part, uh, most of the critiques about my dish. It's a very strong dish, May. You got some very strong components in there. Broth is beautiful. You should not have used the tube to do filling. Spot pond, I would never try to overcook it because it gets very mushy. Other than that, not enough caviar, but <laughs> that's me, Rich Alvin. I enjoyed the dish immensely. The flavors, the taste, the texture. I do share Alvin's comments. I'd like a little more caviar on it. <laughs> I think, May, you keep surprising us with your level of skill. The pasta is perfectly rolled with regards to spot prawns. I would have just laid those on top of the pasta and then draped a little bit of the hot chili oil on top of them and lightly cooked them, just kind of kissed them with the oil, and you'd have a masterpiece. Thank you, Chef. Oh my gosh, I am so nervous about them trying my dish because of time and just everything that happened today. I was just lucky to get something on the plate. I feel so bad, I'm sorry guys. Oh, that's beautiful. I am super nervous. Um, so today I have a ravioli dopey, two raviolis together. One side has nadilla sausage with some braised skirt steak, and the other side has lemon ricotta. And then it was supposed to be with a reduction that got burnt, so I just did a quick beef reduction with that. May, tell us your thoughts on Taya's dish. Um, it was a small bite, uh, but I enjoyed it. The spiciness of the injuya was really nicely countered by the lemon ricotta and the broth that's currently in here. I got a deep, rich beef flavor. The presentation I actually really liked. I thought it was really beautiful. The ricotta was lovely. I found the sausage a little bit overpowering and a little bit salty for me. There's some valid points, but I also feel like there's some not so valid points. Christopher, how do you feel about having another pasta at this point of the menu? I think our menu could have been planned a little bit better. We have had a lot of starchy courses coming up to this point. Nay, in retrospect, do you wish that you'd been a little more flexible, maybe? I think neither of us really wanted to relent. We just had that idea in our head. A protein really should have been a fourth course, for sure. From the total menu planning standpoint, I feel like we let down what our original concept was. However, I think the fact that there's even a dish in front of us is a testament to her strength as a cook and her never give up attitude. And that's incredibly admirable. I enjoyed it. Thank you. I have to agree with Andrew. I think the dish itself is really strong. The pasta is perfectly rolled out. The broth, I think it's rich and intense, maybe a bit too salty. But overall, there's nothing wrong with this dish. Thank you. Wow. A lot of activity happening here, Mary. What are you making? I'm making a pumpkin gnocchi with a blue bechamel. I'm not putting potato in there because I want to keep the pumpkin flavor up front. Sounds actually quite ambitious. We'll see. <laughs> you think Veronica gave you uh, a gift? I do think she gave me a gift. OK. This is a pumpkin gnocchi with a blue cheese bechamel and crispy sage. All right, so let me try it. You have the liver. You know, you have the sweetness from the pumpkin in the gnocchi. You have the saltiness coming from the crispy panchenta. And the blue cheese, just that oomph. Nothing's overpowering each other. You know, I love these little orange gnocchis because when I see them, it reminds me of pumpkin. I'm gonna say, you deliver what we wanted. Thank you, Chef. Definitely what I wanted. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, May. Hi, Chef Alvin. How are you doing? I'm good. How do you feel? I'm feeling OK. There's no such thing as bad ingredients. So if you can't make those ingredients shine, then it's on you. OK, that's the right attitude. Now, let me ask you, what are you going to do? I'm going to be making an egg yolk ravioli. And I also confit some tomatoes with some Parmesan cheese and crispy garlic. That sounds like a lot, OK? <laughs> are you sure you can do that 45 minutes? That's all my mind, but I'm going to give it my all. I made a egg yolk ravioli, and I also confit some tomatoes, and then I topped it off with some Parmesan cheese and crispy garlic. Visually looking at it, it looks a little bit childish in terms of the plating, you know, just something that you see at children's parties. So the moment of truth, so I'm going to slice into that raviolo. What am I going to see? Uh, you should see a runny egg yolk, I'm really hoping. 
Well, look at that. Yes. You nailed it. It's oozing out, and this is perfect, perfectly cooked. Wow. Pasta's perfect. It's got very nice texture. Beautiful use of five ingredients. You did a really good job. Thank you. Christopher, how are you feeling? Nervous. You have shown us that you could do savory, so what do you worry about? There is a lot of very strong cooks today down here in the kitchen, and I don't know if I can match them. Mm -hmm. This is definitely not my strong suit. You can do it to win this. You must have confidence, OK? Like yes. me, I'm full of it. Confidence. Got it. Thank you, chef. And when you're sealing the tortellini, you can use a little egg wash, a splash of water, and sometimes you can do it without any of that. As long as the dough is soft and moist enough, you give it a good crimp pitch, nice it will pitch. not open up. Come on now. One minute, you have one minute left, come on! I want to see some beautiful tortellini dish in one minute! Come on, guys, last stretch, you can do this. Looking good, you're looking good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! This is a tortellini stuffed with portobello mushroom anchovy pesto. What's in the sauce? The sauce is a standard Mornay sauce with mozzarella and some garlic. I like the presentation. It's clean. I like clean dishes, but with flavor. Hopefully this delivers. Well, pasta, perfect. Filling, when you were putting those cooked white anchovies, didn't think it would work. You deliver on that too. Only problem is, it was a little bit dry. The reason was you could put more of that creamy cheese sauce. Christopher, please bring up your tortellini. I'm worried that my filling is dry. I'm worried my presentation isn't impressive enough. And I'm feeling really nervous. So the filling is made of pancetta, sausage, portobello, and artichoke hearts. It's been flavored with garlic, onion, and sage. Well, the shape to me looks terrific. Let's see what they look like inside. A good amount of filling? You happy with that? Yes. Well, the pasta's cooked very nicely. The filling, I find a little subtle, but an interesting combination of ingredients. This is quite good. Thank you. Wow. How did you achieve such a beautiful, creamy, light cream sauce? I started with a roux. I used a bit of a white wine reduction in it and mixed with cheese. Wow, it's so velvety. You're a pastry guy, right? That's where you're confident? Yeah. Well, I think it's time you begin to be a little more confident in the savory world because you have a beautiful tortellini here. It's very good. Thank you, Chef. Kristen gave me black garlic. Black garlic is fermented garlic. It's double the antioxidants and really healthy for you. I'm super familiar with black garlic. You know, I make it at home all the time. That's a, a huge stroke of luck for me. It tastes exactly like balsamic vinegar. It's not really a standalone kind of ingredient, right? So you really have to kind of coax all that flavor out of it into something else. I'm gonna make a pappardelle with a black garlic cream sauce, and I'm gonna have a deep fried egg yolk on top. I'm hoping that that black garlic flavor is the star of the dish, because if it's not, that's a one-way ticket back to Regina. What I have for you today is a pappardelle with black garlic cream sauce and some lump crab. I love black garlic. Now, the most important thing is the balance. Oh, man, wow. The black garlic sauce is beautiful. You get a lot of your mommy. It's great. I couldn't think of a better way to use black garlic. You really honor that ingredient. The pasta itself, you don't get that nice al dente, so it's a little bit tough. The egg yolk adds, voila, perfect touch. Good job. Thank you, chef. Making a raviolo such as this, it is a very, very difficult task. It's like walking through a minefield. I would agree. All the ingredients have to work in concert. 
there's a sequence. They have to make the dough first, knead it, get it relaxed, let it rest. before they can roll it. Exactly. Because if they don't relax it, it's not going to work. The ricotta cheese has to be the right consistency. If the ricotta is too wet, it'll bleed through. Right. There's actually no room for error. 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes left. OK, guys, you need to be rolling out that dough. Not too thick, not too thin. If you uh, pass the dough is too thick, then it's going to be tough. If it's too thin, it won't support all the ingredients that are inside. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes left. You need to be filling your raviolo by now, and those need to be moving. Have a nice bath. Two minutes. You have two minutes left. Your raviolo should be in the water cooking by now. You should be finishing off your sauce and getting ready to plate. If they overcook the noodle, that means the egg inside will be solid. And that defeats the entire purpose of this dish, because the wow factor lies in that egg being very liquidy. Oh, my God. I wonder how many have actually made a crispy fried sage leaf. 10, 9, wipe the plate. 8, 7, wipe the plate. 5, come on. 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up. up. Heads up. Kayla. Hello, Chef. Nice presentation. And I see you have some shaved parmigiano on top. Yes, Chef. Well done. How did the crispy sage turn out for you? I get a little crunch. Well done. Let's try the big test. Does that make you happy? That makes me really happy. <laughs> the egg was very nice. So was the pasta. But not bad for a first time out. I am making my play on spaghetti and meatballs with whipped ricotta. I remember coming home from school and there'd be a spaghetti and meatballs on the stovetop and you could just smell it in the house. It's just this like little hug in your belly. So I'm doing a agnolotti in brodo. I'm stuffing my agnolotti with ground meat, even though it's not meat, and tofu, ricotta, and then the tomato broth. I'm super confident in this because I cook a lot of vegetarian and vegan at home. So yeah, I'm super pumped. I'm gonna freaking kill it, man. Usually with stuffed pasta, you use egg to create a bit more structure, but I can't use eggs. I start filling up my pasta, doing my little folds, little pillows. It definitely doesn't have the structure as egg yolk pasta, but they are stuffed. I get them in the water. I look up at the clock, and I'm like, oh my gosh. 20 minutes! You only have 20 minutes left! <sighs> My favorite comfort food is pasta. So I did stuffed agnolotti with a tomato brodo. The stuffing is ground meat and ricotta, plant-based style. All those flavors work really well together. That basil just pops in your mouth. Your agnolotti is ethereal, it's light, and you had no eggs. Very, very difficult to achieve, and you did it. Thank you, Chef. Hi, Taya. Nice to see you smiling. Yeah. I want to see how generous you were with the filling. Look at that. You couldn't have stuffed more in there if you tried. <laughs> nice and savory. <laughs> Texture-wise, it is soft. It has a wonderful creamy finish to it. Keep it up. Thank you. Hey, Tamara. Hi, Chef. Fresh noodles. Fresh yes, broth. Yes, Chef. A pigeon broth. That's delicious. Thank you, Chef. Incredible. Looks like you've been kind of flying under the radar. Is this your chance to really come out? This is exactly my chance to come out and shine. Yeah. My Maybe. noodles turned out perfect, and the broth is super, so this dish is for the judges. Can you tell me a little about your dish, please? An Italian-Asian fusion dish with Italian noodles and Asian broth. The broth, I love the color, that rich golden brown. It's amazing. Thank you, Chef. If I would change one thing on this dish, I would look for a little of that pigeon meat nestled under the noodles or in between that just popped out every once in a while. Very nicely done. Thank you. 
Looks very nice. The richness and the city, the perfect balance. That to me, it's a very, very nice dish. Thank you, chef. I'm gonna, you know, be ballsy and do a pasta. It is incredibly risky <laughs> to make a tortellini in 45 minutes. God. But if you play it safe, you may not get noticed. I always forget it's such a bloody workout. 20 minutes! You have 20 minutes left! 20 minutes. So short on time, which seems to be my downfall. I am very much under the gun. Man alive, why did I do this to myself? How do you do this every week? This is a lot of stress. I haven't even stuffed my tortellini yet. I don't think I'm going to finish. Young Taya. Hi. Hey, what's going on? I'm making a tortellini. So I've got like a ricotta sausage, um, and then I'm going to do a peach sauce. But I'm running out of time right now. You're all right. Remember, those ravs only take a couple of minutes to cook. Only tip I would say is remember when you're doubling this pasta up, it swells in the water. Right. So just maybe question thickness of pasta. Right. But okay. don't freak out. OK. Don't Thank freak you, out. Chef. Be confident. I'm going to try to do a couple thinner ones, take what he said. And hopefully I don't hyperventilate. Oh, my god. It feels like I just won the lottery. It better be good. <laughs> I did a Indoya ricotta stuffed tortellini with white wine peach sauce and warm peach salsa. Oh, man. I can't believe you're going to eat my food right now. <laughs> Let's do it. Ooh. I mean, for me, it looks cute, it looks pretty, but then you eat it and it's like, pow! Big flavor. <laughs> You've got the big, smoky flavor of the andouille and the lightness that kind of comes with the ricotta. And then the sauce, I've never had anything like that. I like the introduction of peach. And actually, across Italy, they use peaches in many interesting, savory ways. So good job, girl. Very Thank impressive. You. The filling is, it's good. The sausage has that heat component, and the peach just cools it right down. But I think the sauce is a little bit heavy. But the dish is very ambitious, and you're showing that you're here to push yourself. Yeah, Chef, I am. Great work. I am going to try to bring out the essence of the truffles, so I'm making a simple macaroni and cheese. I know it's a decadent ingredient, and I'm going to try to treat it with the respect that it deserves. Hi, David. Hello, Chef. I have a cooked with truffles. That I've never done. What are you making? Truffled ricotta agnolotti. Who do you think is, is weak in this group here? Anybody from a small town, anybody that doesn't have these uh, types of products readily available is going to be a tough ingredient for them, including myself. There's not too many truffles in Surrey. So before I tuck in, tell me about your dish. It's a truffled ricotta agnolotti, the shaved truffles on top. Well, looks alone, it certainly is a restaurant-quality dish. Pasta is delicate, light, fluffy dances on your tongue. And then the rich creaminess of the ricotta cheese with that secondary flavor of the truffle. And then a sauce that is big and rich. It's definitely the kind of dish I'd like to put on my restaurant menu. Thanks. Wonderful. And all done in an hour. It was close. What do you do again for a living? <laughs> I'm a concrete guy. It's like a trained chef did this. It's one of the best dishes I've, I've had so far. Thank you. It's incredible. My plate looks the way I want it to. My flavors are there. I'm leaving it in the judge's hands. This is called the Uptown Ting. Mac and cheese truffle swing. They come together. <laughs> I like comfort and I like simplicity. Macaroni, cheese, cream cheese, truffles. Was it a fluke or did you know it? I knew it. I tried to honor the ingredient. Well, you certainly impressed me. Thank you. If they overcomplicate it, I think that could be a big problem for them. You gotta keep things pure and simple. With great classic Italian ingredients like this, it's often a case of less is more. Less is more. Super excited and nervous at the same time. I'm gonna go straight Italian today. Fresh pasta, tomato sauce, freshly chopped basil. Make a fresh pasta for an Italian. 
You know, there's always been a century debate about who invented the pasta, the Chinese or the Italians. Well, that's you not know, much of a debate. You know, since you guys copy our pasta, <laughs> we just copy your handbags. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for, for me, it would just be pasta. Just pasta. Pasta, nice tomato sauce. Simple thing. All right, Eric, how you doing? Good, how are you, Chef? Today, I'm gonna try and go a little more simple. I don't want to be super chaotic in front of Joe. What's in the tomato sauce? Just the tomatoes? Just the sunrise on the tomatoes? No, I'm gonna, I have the infused flavor from the sausage. Uh-huh. And you're gonna put the garlic. Is there a vampire convention happening? You're gonna saute the onion and all that pork fat? Yes. A little heavy, no? Everything I was doing for my sauce, he questioned. You're gonna put some wine in it? It's too late now. Never too late, my friend. Pasta and tomato sauce could seem too simple and underwhelming, and it could definitely send me home. Tell me about the dish. It's homemade fettuccine, sausage, hand crushed tomato sauce, topped with basil. It's pretty simple, though. Did you want to stay simple, or were you trying to impress? Um, I usually overcomplicate things. Today, I thought I'd stick with clean flavors. It does kind of come together as a pasta dish. It has good flavor. Try it. What do you think? So you were in my restaurant. What would you pay for that? $15. $15? dollars Are you overvaluing yourself? Uh, let's see what they say. I'm really happy this time you kept it simple. Yes, Chef. But if you're gonna charge 20 bucks for that pasta, that pasta better be right on. And I mean from the sauce to the noodle. Texture, consistency, you hit it right on. I would say it's a very nice fish. Thank you. So ricotta is cream, milk, and lemon juice. I like to put a pinch of salt in mine. You bring those ingredients to a boil. A little bit more, baby, just a little bit more. You add the lemon juice, and then it will slowly start to curdle because of the acidity from the lemon juice. Oh, it's curdling, it's curdling. I cannot stand cheese. I absolutely hate it. I understand the chemistry behind it. It's the weirdest thing for a home cook to not like cheese. I'm not going to be able to taste my food. Basically, I'm driving blind. Now, remove it off the heat. Let it set so those curds start to form. Then you can strain it off to let the whey drop out. Feeling the pressure. I just need to focus. This pressure test is intense. I don't know if I can do it, but I love cheese, so that is what I'm banking on. Cheese can't do me wrong. Mary's got the right idea. She has triple layer of cheesecloth, which is going to trap all of the cheese curds inside of the cheesecloth. That's smart. Smart, smart. good thinking. Mmm, chunky. My ricotta is hanging. Come on. OK. I'm just rolling out my pasta now, and I need to stuff it. Jack wants to look like she has very little filling and a lot of pasta. Sean needs to roll his pasta like right now. Like now. Sean is doing three different types of doughs put together. And I'm thinking, buddy, are you nuts? You gotta hustle. Speed. I'm behind. The pasta is making me really nervous. I'm making three colored ravioli that's stuffed with ricotta, parmesan, and provolone in a creamy velouté sauce. Sean, he despises cheese. Sean is going to struggle, but he always surprises us. Now they have to start their nudie. Nudie are a really light but hearty dumpling. It's not a gnocchi. It just should be like a little cheese pillow. Two minutes. You have two minutes left. Time to start plating two beautiful pasta dishes. Yes, chef. Go, Sean. 10, 9, 8, 7, come 6, on, come on. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, hands up. So you used every last bit of ricotta to create these two dishes. Yes, Chef. You definitely achieved that beautiful, pillowy, fluffy look. The raviolis are generous. But what's happening inside? Hmm. I can 
see ricotta in here, but is it gonna come through in the taste? The ravioli is good. I can taste the ricotta. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Mary, Hi. which of the two dishes are you most proud of? I'm most proud of the nudie. I like how bright it is. They look wonderful. The color, your little drizzle of, basil was that a oil. basil oil? Yes. And that's a beautiful size. Thank you. Of a nudie. Feathery light. The sauce, the freshness, just that hint of garlic. No misstep there. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, OK, OK, OK. I got to do something different. I got to get out of my comfort zone. I have not yet made a pasta in this competition, let alone in 45 minutes. I'm taking this risk. Hey, John, how are you feeling? I was a little bit rattled at the start, but now I pull it together. I'm making pasta now. We got a fettuccine and a white wine cream sauce, and then we have the periwinkles. It looks interesting. Good luck. Thank you. I was so close to winning in the Mystery Box Challenge. To get this win, I have to be perfect. We have a sea snail and cremini fettuccine with a white wine shallot cream sauce. Wow. Your presentation is going up in the division here. Thank you. That pasta matches that sauce perfectly. We have the nice, soft noodles reacting with this crunchy snail. It could use a little bit of salt. Sea snails is really more about texture. Yeah. You really have to infuse taste into it. So a fantastic looking dish, just a touch more seasoning. Okay. Thank Good. you. Well done. My sort of MO is doing classics with a twist. I'm going to try and get a pea velouté done with uh, some tortellini uh, stuffed with celery puree and some seared tuna. When I think tuna, I think the Mediterranean and I think sushi. And I can't make sushi, so I'm going Mediterranean. I think I've barely scratched the surface of what I have to show. Aaron's right underneath us. We can see that he's doing these beautiful pasta from scratch. Aaron, that dough is sexy. Thanks, brother. This competition is the only thing that matters right now. My food dream is to be a restaurateur. Uh, I'd really love to own my own joint. And uh, every day that I'm here is a step closer to making that a reality. Hello, 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 hello. Let's go. It's a tuna satake with celery root tortelloni, with mint and pea velouté. It's very sophisticated. It's intelligent. What is inside your tortelloni? It's a celery root puree. I tried to keep it simple. I wanted to mimic the idea of the cream of celery soup. You sound like a pro. Far from it, chef. You've just created the best dish I've had in four seasons. It's amazing. It's extraordinary praise, chef. There's nothing wrong with it. It's amazing. That sauce, it just pops with flavor. Your tortelloni are perfect. Perfectly cooked. You can tell they're handmade. What a shame it would be if you don't quit the job that you have now and become a chef. It'd be a real shame. <laughs>